Good day, it's Tony Fortunato from the technology firm. Today I want to show you a free Chrome extension. It's called Page Load Time. It's for measuring how long it takes to load a web page. Really helpful for baselining, for troubleshooting. Uh, it's also really nice to know how long it takes to load pages if you're going to different sites and doing things different ways. So I'm going to just jump right into this. Uh, the what and the whys. So when testing performance, there are many times when you need to determine a consistent, that's key, right, consistent way to measure page load time. So you can use a stopwatch, but that isn't that accurate. Uh, it takes a lot of focus to determine when to hit stop on the watch. Is the page done loading? Is it still kind of spinning, but it looks like it's loaded? All that kind of stuff. So um, it sounds easy, but it can get really complicated very fast. So where to measure? Uh, I prefer to start measurements at the client's computer. Some network people like to go on the backbone or the WAN or the data center, whatever. Uh, I always like to start near the client because uh, I'd like to prove if it's them or not. And then from there, you kind of work your way out. And they're also they're the ones complaining, right? So it's easy to figure out if it's actually quick or not. The problem with working with the client is that you need to remove that human element, right? Their perception when they believe things are bad and that it's slow, when in fact it's not. I always joke when I present that the Friday before the long weekend, everybody can swear things are way too slow and slower than normal because they're trying to get out of work, right? They, when they want to get out, they want to do stuff and all that kind of stuff. Um, I also want to remove opinion from the equation. I want some quantitative data. I want some numbers. I don't want people to say, I think, right? I want to say 10, 20, 50, whatever the number happens to be. So for example, if the web page loaded in 30 seconds, you make some changes and now it loads in five seconds, it's clearly faster now than before. I also prefer to take measurements from the client since it will include all background process on the, on the actual computer. Uh, if the server has any interactions with any other types of servers that's going to cause delay load on the client and the server and the network all those variables get lumped into this one measurement uh, which kind of makes things good just to get a number but it also makes things complicated if you need to strip away the different layers to find out what the issue is so here's an example so you go to web uh, networkcomputing.com and there's some DNS involved, some CSS, HTML, JavaScript. It's talking to all these servers, which is very common. It's not just this site. And some sites will do more than other sites. So it's just important to understand that if you are going to measure away from the client, then you need to make sure you include all these other servers and or services. So here's page load time. I'm going to put the URL in the actual uh, YouTube description and the actual article. So you can just click on it. And if not, just go to your Chrome extension search engine and type page load time. This will appear. There's lots of them out there. Some of them I just don't agree with what they do. Some of them don't explain how they do things. And that's one thing I like about this. If you do go to the website for this extension, they explain exactly how they measure stuff doesn't matter if you agree or not it's just they're one of the few people that actually explain it and I always say if you can explain things you're always right you may not agree and that's fine but at least you know how they do things now the extension in action so you, you basically got your web page as soon as it's done loading you've got this little icon 5.13 5.13 seconds that's how long it took uh, and then it gives you a breakdown of your how long DNS took um, and all this request response kind of stuff. It's all pretty obvious, but even if you don't click on it and you just use the stopwatch icon, that's plenty to work with just alone. Um, the conclusion to all of this is that as long as you understand how these measurements are calculated and you use the same tool and the same methodology, your methodology is sound, right? Don't worry about right and wrong. Just don't worry about that. Just make sure you understand whatever you do, how you do it and how it works. So provide accurate test results on a Microsoft system. You should always clear your DNS cache. You should always clear the Chrome temp files. Uh, I'll even throw another one in. You should always clear your ARP cache as well. And that way your machine is always kind of working quote unquote fresh. And so it's resolving your ARP table. It's resolving the DNS. It's not working off of uh, files already within the Chrome temp files. And then that usually gives you the most consistent, reliable results. And again, you might want to automate this because I know everybody knows I'm a big automation guy. Uh, but if you are going to automate this, at that point, you're probably going to start looking at different products. And I've shown people many of them that will do some of this for you. But after you've done this, if you know what your response times are, you can start comparing that to these automated systems, right? So I guess I'll just finish this off with just a really quick demonstration. 
I'm just going to resize my browser here. Here you go. There's network computing. And you can see, I don't know if you can read that or not, it's a 7.83. That's how long that took. Uh, that's seconds, by the way. If I hit refresh, okay, I didn't clear my cache. I didn't do anything. Um, and you're going to watch the timer. And this is now 4.5. Is that because the DNS was already resolved? Is that because the cache had files in it already? Blah, 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 blah. And you're going to be chasing all those questions all the time. Whereas the proper methodology would have been for me to go, again, clear my ARP cache, clear my DNS, clear my temp files, and then hit refresh, right? And by doing it that way, you always end up with the same consistent methodology. And if there are any variances in that time, then you could just say, okay, well, it can't be the computer. It might be the WAN. It might be the firewall. It might be the server. All that kind of stuff comes into play. Uh, but you can take that aside. I'm just trying to show you how to do this consistently from the client's perspective. That's it. So hope you enjoyed that. Have a good day. Bye for now.